It's February 7, 2021, and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are about to take on the Kansas City Chiefs in front of a mass crowd of 25,000 people. This is the largest crowd that's been allowed to attend an NFL game all year, as the country is still reeling with the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic and most of the people watching are still stuck at home as they witness Tom Brady and the Buccaneers rout the Chiefs 31-9. By all accounts, this wasn't a very entertaining Super Bowl, but somewhere in his New York City office, it's not the game that Commissioner Roger Goodell is worried about. No, Goodell's biggest concern is likely this graph, which charts Super Bowl TV viewership against the average cost of a 30 second ad, and how for the fifth year in a row, Super Bowl ad spend has outpaced TV viewership. Now for any other American sports league, these would be record setting numbers, but for Roger Goodell and the NFL, this is Armageddon. You see, back in 2010, Goodell promised NFL owners that he'd lead the league to $25 billion in revenue by 2027. But since then, viewership growth for the league's biggest game has slowed down dramatically, even declining in the past few years. And as for ad prices, well, those can't keep going up forever either, which means in order for Roger Goodell to hit his revenue target and keep his job, he'll have to take the biggest leap in sports history by turning the Super Bowl into a pay-per-view event. Now, Goodell and the NFL didn't just wake up one day and decide they may want to charge for the Super Bowl. That would have been certain brand suicide. Instead, they've been quietly plotting to eventually move every game off of linear TV and onto a streaming platform, not just the Super Bowl. And it all started back in 2001 with this man, Chris Rousseau. Now, Chris first made a splash before the 2001 season when it was announced that the NFL would be signing a five-year, $325 million deal with three companies, one of which was AOL, to host NFL video content online. And this was a big deal for two reasons. For starters, it was the richest internet sports rights deal ever. No league or team had ever gotten as much money for the rights to post their content online as the NFL just got. And secondly, this was the first time a major sports league had ever sold video rights to an internet company, because historically, they didn't want to upset their TV broadcast partners who were already paying these leagues hundreds of millions of dollars per year for the TV rights. But the NFL didn't seem to care, even creating a new department in March of 2002 called New Media and Publishing that would be responsible for landing even more of these types of deals. And they tasked Chris Rousseau with running it. Fast forward to January 2003, just a month before Super Bowl 36, and the league announced that it was testing an online subscription model for Superbowl.com. Now, it's not like the league was thinking of charging for the game, especially not in 2003, but they did partner with a company in Seattle to charge fans $9.95 per month to access exclusive video features throughout the playoffs. In a statement, Rousseau estimated that there would be, quote, tens of thousands of subscribers that would sign up during this initial test, even admitting that if this test was successful, then the NFL would look to develop a subscription program that would include elements such as video, audio, enhanced analytics, and fantasy football in the future, something that was frankly unheard of at the time. Now, for this test, the NFL got a revenue share of the subscriptions and collected a $500,000 licensing fee but it started to become clear that it wasn't the money the league was after. Because the following season, the league extended its partnership with that company from the Super Bowl to make audio and video content available on their website for the entire 2003 season, giving us the earliest iterations of the NFL Network and the NFL app, even though the project likely wasn't even profitable at the time. But then in 2005, Chris Rousseau decided to leave the NFL stating, quote, clearly there's a business model established on the internet. Digital content is going the way of music, selling directly to consumers. So with all that opportunity remaining, it was the right time for me to become a principal of a business. Russo ended up starting a consulting firm, which helps companies license their content online. But without him at the helm, the NFL was stagnant for almost a decade, only making incremental improvements until they decided, once again, to do something that had never been done before. It's October 2015. The Jacksonville Jaguars and Buffalo Bills are facing off in London's Wembley Stadium. But it's not the location of the game that's important. That's because while 90,000 fans are gathered in the UK to watch this game live, another 15 million people are tuned in across the world to watch the game in a way they never have before. 
You see, earlier in the year, Yahoo and the NFL struck a deal worth the reported $20 million for Yahoo to stream this game across all of its available properties, including, for some reason, Tumblr. Now, this is the earliest recorded instance of a streaming company paying the NFL for a one-off game, except this one didn't go according to plan. For starters, viewers reported a mixed experience, with many calling it a disaster due to freezing and blurring. But after working out many of the kinks in the first 20 minutes, the NFL and Yahoo claim their first ever stream went off without a hitch. That was until the viewership numbers came in. Now, if you read headlines at the time, you would have thought that the NFL's first ever live streamed game was a smashing success, with 15.2 million viewers watching for free across the world, which wasn't much of a drop off from a normal Thursday or Monday night football game. But when you dig into the numbers, you'll see that the 15.2 million figure was actually the number of total unique visitors to the stream, when in reality, the game averaged fewer than 2 million viewers here in the US. Not to mention advertisers were still weary of the viability of streaming a game online, which resulted in Yahoo having to cut its price per ad in half from $200,000 to $100,000. But like we saw back in 2003, the NFL wasn't judging the success of this game based purely on dollars and cents, because they had just begun the process of training their viewers to watch one of their games somewhere other than traditional TV, a process they already knew would be a long and tedious uphill battle. And the league even admitted as much after all the numbers came out, with an official statement saying, quote, all of these numbers boil down to one simple fact, get ready for more streaming NFL games. And the NFL stayed true to their word, announcing in 2022 that ESPN streaming service, ESPN Plus, would host one exclusive international game per year as a part of the company's $2.7 billion annual deal with the NFL. And then not long after, the league's move to streaming was solidified for good when it signed an 11-year, $1 billion per year deal with Amazon to stream Thursday night football games on Prime Video. Now, this deal was significant for two reasons. First, it was the most lucrative per regular season game deal in NFL history, with Amazon paying an estimated $62.5 million per game. But this also marked a shift in the industry that was notably different from 2015 when the NFL streamed its first game on Yahoo, because no longer did streaming services have to drop their ad prices to fill inventory. No, instead, ad revenue on streaming services was actually surging, with companies like Netflix and Disney seeing a 29% increase in their annual advertising revenue, while linear media networks were posting declining ad revenue every quarter. But the second impact of this Amazon NFL deal was probably even more significant. It was the fact that even though consumers complained about having to pay $8.99 per month to watch an NFL game that used to be free, even threatening not to watch it, they still did. In fact, not only did fans watch these Thursday night football games, they did so in record-breaking numbers. During the platform's first broadcast in 2022, they broke the record for the most new Prime signups over a three-hour period. Prime then set the record at the beginning of the 2023 season for the most streamed game in NFL history, only to top themselves later on in the season when the Cowboys-Seahawks game averaged 15.26 million viewers. And then, in what felt like the ultimate middle finger to its fans, the NFL was paid $110 million for a single wildcard playoff game to stream exclusively on Peacock. And what happened? Peacock saw record signups and set the record for the biggest live-streamed event in US history with almost 28 million people tuning in. That's more people than those who watched last year's legendary Jaguars comeback against the Chargers for free on NBC. So it's clear that for as much as fans complain and threaten not to watch these streamed-only games behind a paywall, they still will. But why is that? And what does it mean when it comes to the Super Bowl? Well, first, I want to introduce you to John Skipper. He's the former president of ESPN, and I think he gives the best explanation of why fans are willing to pay for games that used to be free, and why, if the NFL wanted, they could probably even start charging for the Super Bowl. They don't want to be left out. That's a pretty great place to be for a live event, which is that 50% of the country does not want to be left out. But how much could they charge? Well, first, let's hear John Skipper's prediction. I don't know how many households, uh, it's, it's I assume half the households in the United States watched. 
if it was only a quarter of the households who were willing to pay $250 to have a party at their house, it would still get you into the billions of dollars for a single game. And that is the single best way I can think of for the NFL to increase their annual revenue take for their clubs is to make the Super Bowl a pay-per-view event. Now, I personally think that $250 or even $200 is a little high. So let's assume the NFL would price it closer to $100, which is only a little more than the current UFC pay-per-views. If they got even half of a normal Super Bowl audience to pay for it, they would clear $6 billion in revenue from just one game. That's more than the NHL makes in a season and over half of what MLB and the NBA make every year. But wait, because advertisers would still be tripping over themselves for a spot on the stream. And even if we assume that the NFL could only make about half of what they normally make on the Super Bowl, they'd still be clearing $250 million in ad revenue. Now the only question is, who would stream it? Well, the NFL has obviously been developing NFL.com to be a viable platform to stream games. And with 60 million people signing up to watch the Super Bowl every year, you can make the argument that they'd be able to make even more money on those people throughout the next season. Or maybe a broadcast partner comes in and pays the NFL for the rights to stream the Super Bowl on their platform, understanding it would likely result in record-breaking signups. What would that be worth? Two, three, maybe even four billion dollars? Whatever they decide, the NFL probably already has a plan in place, and they're just using all of these individual games to get you ready for whenever it happens. And by the time you notice, it'll already be too late. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed this deep dive, I have another video that I think you might enjoy as well.